The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. It's coming. All these voices. My name is James Hershey. Right back. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Staring into the Abyss. I am your host, horror author James Hershey Jr., and with me, as always, my co-host, old boy James Ash. How you doing, brother? Oh, uh, pretty good tonight, guys. How you guys all doing tonight? On tonight's episode, we're going to be talking about the Pied Piper of Hamlin. Now, everybody's heard this old fairy tale about the Pied Piper of Hamlin that played a flute and led the children away. And most people probably think that it's exactly that, just a fairy tale. It's a myth. But there's actually historical evidence that suggests that this myth is actually true. That it actually happened in 1248 in a town called Hamlin, Germany. Now, the earliest depiction of the Pied Piper was a stained glass church window that was put up in Hamlin, Germany in 1300. Now this window was later destroyed, but accounts of what this window looked like say that it featured a colorfully dressed man that was leading a group of children. And it was believed to have been made in the memory of a tragic event that happened in the town. Now, the earliest written town records of Hamlin also state that in 1348, and this is a quote, it is 100 years since our children left, end quote. There's also a manuscript that dates back to 1440, which says that on the 26th of June in 1248, 130 children that were born in Hamlin were led away by a piper clothed in many colors to Calvary near the Coppin and lost. Now, this evidence shows us that there were children in Hamlin that did in fact go missing and that the Piper was the one that led them away. So we have actual historical evidence that this really took place. But what people don't agree on is what happened to the children. Why were they led away? What was the motive behind it all? There's a whole bunch of different theories on this. So we're going to go through a few of them tonight. I think this ought to be fun. The first theory is that the Pied Piper was actually a rat catcher that was out for revenge on the town of Hamlin. Now, the way this story goes is that the Pied Piper of Hamlin was a rat catcher that was hired by the town to get rid of an unbelievably bad rat infestation that Hamlin was having at the time. So he came in and he did his job and he got rid of all the rats. He purged the rats, they were all dead. 
Um, usually the way that rat catchers at that time period did that, the way they would get rid of the rats was by luring them with the music and the rats would follow the music for some reason and they would lure them down to the river and, and they would drown in the river. A lot of the historical accounts of the time state that that's how towns deal with rat problems is they would hire somebody to come in and he would play a pipe and the rats would follow him to the river and they would drown. Sounds insane, but that's what it says. So he did his job and he lured the rats away and they drowned in the river and he came back to the town for his money. Well, the town refused to pay him. And so the Pied Piper got upset. And according to this theory, what he did was he came back and he lured the children away with his pipe, with playing his music, just like he would do with the rats. And he led them either to a hill or down to the river and drown them. So either he lured them into the river and they drowned just like he did the rats, or he took them up onto a hill and murdered them. That's what the theory is. Now, there's a little bit of stuff that, that kind of supports this theory. One of the earliest manuscripts that talk about the incident state that the children were led away to the coppin. I read that earlier. Which translates to either a knoll or like a domed hill. And that is thought to be a reference to one of several hills that actually do surround Hamlin. Koppelberg Hill and Koppelberg Mountain, as well as the river, have been written into many versions of this tale as locations where the children might have died. And early depictions of the Pied Piper show a man with some sort of musical pipe-like instrument, as well as a group of children that's following him between the river and the mountain. So they got the river on one side and the mountain on the other side. So from these early depictions of this tale, you have both of those elements, either the river or the mountain. Now, rats were definitely a nuisance at this time in Germany, but there's not really a lot of evidence in any of the official records of what happened in Hamlin that states that the Pied Piper was a rat catcher or that the town hired him. And the earliest accounts of this legend have absolutely no mention at all of rats. That wasn't added until the 16th century, that that version of the story with rats, him being a rat catcher, comes about. So the whole rat catcher turned child murderer theory has some holes in it. According to this theory, we're supposed to believe that the Pied Piper was hired to get rid of rats. I can believe that. That's not outlandish. He lured them away. They drowned in the river. Eh, I kind of can believe that. I mean, there's a lot of evidence from the time period all over the place that that's how they did it. So I guess I can believe that. But we're also supposed to believe that he got a, over 100 children, 130 children, to follow him to their death because he was playing a pipe. You know, he, he's playing a little flutey-like thing and, and making good music. And so he can get all these kids to follow him and either drown them in the river or murder them on a hill. If he drowned them in the river, they'd have to be in some kind of trance, I would think, to go into the river and drown. And there's no evidence at all in any of the tales that it caused some kind of trance. Or he took them up on a hill and murdered them. Well, how are you going to get them to hold still to murder them? Yeah, you might be able to murder the first two or three if you do it quick. Bop, 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 they're dead. But the rest are going to scatter and run. So he'd have to chase down each one of these kids unless he tied them up or something. I don't know. There's some definite holes in that theory. And where the hell were the parents? Where were the parents when their children were being led away to be murdered by this guy that was a rat catcher that was mad at the town? Where were the parents? If it was me, I, I wouldn't allow my child to go follow some strange guy in colorful clothes playing a pipe. So, I mean, those are some questions I have about that theory. The next theory is that the Pied Piper was actually a pedophile. That one kind of seems to make a little bit more sense to me. That he wasn't a rat catcher, he wasn't upset at the town because he didn't pay him. But he was just a plain old pervert and sicko. And he abducted the children to do what pedophiles do, and then he murdered them. Now, this theory, 
was brought up by a historian named William Manchester, and he wrote a book called A World Lit by Fire. And he describes the Pied Piper as a psychopath and a pedophile who killed the children and left them in the forest. Now, what, what I wonder about this one is, once again, how did he get 100 kids to follow him? Unless he did it a little at a time. But according to the events in Hamlin, according to the documentation, it all happened in one time period. So maybe over the course of a year, he had lured 100 kids away and molested them, raped them, whatever, and then killed them. Maybe it was over the span of an entire year that he did these things. And they're mourning the loss of the children in that year. Maybe that, that makes sense. I imagine he probably got murdered. That's why it stopped. Because I can't imagine somebody being doing that and the parents not doing anything about it. I'm pretty sure they tracked him down. If this theory was true, that they tracked him down and, and murdered the guy. I know I would. Now, a little bit of the evidence of this. Manchester never really cites a source for the accounts. And he puts the date of the whole thing to have happened in 1484, which was 200 years after the date when it actually happened, and 100 years after the first written accounts of it happening. Okay, so his date of 1484 is 100 years past the time from the documentation of the town of Hamlin when they're talking about that their kids left 100 years ago. So to me, that the date's just completely wrong, so I, I don't buy this one. Because how could it have happened 100 years after the town is celebrating or mourning the 100th anniversary of it happening? That just makes no sense to me. The next theory is that the Pied Piper was not an actual person, but he was a symbol of death. Okay, according to this theory, there was no Pied Piper of Hamlin. He did not lure the kids away with music. It's all rubbish, a story. But he's a symbol of death for the children, that the children died of either some sort of plague or a fire or natural disaster, something like that. And over time, the story has developed into this fairy tale of the Pied Piper. But in reality, it was just the fact that the kids died by some natural cause, not some guy killing them. Now, the evidence for this theory is called the Dance of the Dead. Uh, they also call it Dance Macabre. Now, there's a lot of different cultures and a lot of different instances in history where people write a story about events that happened, and they use symbolism, such as, you know, the Pied Piper being the symbolized for death. But to me, it just doesn't, it doesn't make a lot of sense because the two things are so different. If your kids died in a fire, let's say, 100 kids died in a fire, or there was an earthquake, or a tornado came through, and they were all at school or something, and it was wiped the school out, and 100 kids died. When you tell that story, how does it make sense to make it a, a Pied Piper guy that comes in dressed in all colorful clothing and plays his flute and leads the kids away, and they never come back? That To me, that if you're going to do something with symbolism, that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense, that, that character. So I don't know about this one either. I mean, they talk about it could be the Black Plague. Some people say that that because they, they talked about uh, the Pied Piper leading rats away in the story, that rats were known to carry the bubonic plague. So maybe that's where the symbolism comes in, that it was the bubonic plague that killed those kids. But the problem with that is the, the bubonic plague didn't reach Europe until 1347. And that was 50 years or over 50 years after the children were lost. So it's more likely that the rats were added to the story after the incident happened, not as, as a way to symbolize the bubonic plague. Plus, if it, was, if it was the bubonic plague, it wouldn't have happened in one day, on one specific day. Because remember, in, in the manuscript, it says that on the 26th of June, 1248, 130 children were led away by the Piper. So if it was the Black Plague, it wouldn't have hit everybody in one day and killed everybody in one day. The next theory is that 
the Pied Piper was actually part of the Children's Crusades. Now, for those that don't know what the Children's Crusades were, in 1212, supposedly there was a bunch of kids that were led by a French boy and a German boy. And they left to try to go and convert the Muslim kingdoms to Christianity. And they were headed for the Holy Land. Now, in the, in the German story, the boy whose name was Nicholas recruits a large group of children to go with him on the crusade. And it didn't end well. Most of them ended up dying along the way or just stopping and just living where they, where they were, basically, on the way, because they just couldn't go anymore. Now, could it be something like that? I mean, that's this theory, is that, that there, the Pied Piper was actually somebody like this Nicholas character in the German story that was leading the kids away on some sort of religious crusade to convert people to Christianity or something like that. Now, why did the kids not return? Well, maybe they met with some kind of natural disaster along the way. Maybe sinkhole, landslide, something like that took them out. Uh, maybe they were attacked and murdered. Uh, especially if they're going to try to go to the Holy Land and try to convert the Muslims. They're not known as a group of people that take kindly to Christians. So the idea that that a bunch of kids are going to go and try to convert them to Christianity, I don't think that would work out very well for the kids. Because remember, the Crusades was all about retaking the Holy Land, and they were battling against the Muslims at that time. So there was a lot of war going on, a lot of fighting. So a bunch of kids going off to try to convert the Muslims, I think they'd pretty much die. I don't think there's much chance that they would make it there and back without getting murdered. So if that's what it was, then that's probably why they didn't come back, because they were probably beheaded, most honestly. Now, as far as the evidence for the, the truth about the Christian Crusades, a lot of historians say that, that they never happened. Some historians say they did. There's not a whole lot of information about them. Supposedly what the Christian Crusades were, like I said, were kids going to the Holy Land to try to convert to Muslims. Um, but some historians say that the Children's Crusades was actually a story that was invented as a way to portray innocence and purity with the Crusades. So in other words, it was a way to try to make the act of going over to the Holy Land and murdering people to try to take it back for Christianity as an innocent and pure thing instead of a barbaric thing. That's what some people say. I don't think we'll really ever know the, the actual truth about it unless there's some more evidence that is found. The next theory is very, very interesting. I, I really like this one. And it has to do with something called dancing mania. And this theory states that the children of Hamlin literally danced themselves to death and that the Pied Piper was part of this dance of death. Now, dancing mania is something that, that is real. It actually happened. And it was very, very weird. It was this uh, super weird phenomenon that occurred in Europe, especially Germany, during this time period. And what it was was groups of people would begin, begin dancing involuntarily. So they couldn't control it. They just started dancing for no apparent reason, and they weren't in control of themselves. And they, they couldn't stop. I mean, they would dance literally for days and days and days until they collapsed in exhaustion. Or sometimes they would just drop dead from exhaustion and dehydration. Now, historians still don't really know what caused this. They don't know if it was some sort of mass hysteria or some very strange unknown virus that has never come back. They don't really know what could have caused this. We did a show a while ago about fairies. And in that show, we were talking about fairy rings and how if you go into a fairy ring, you might start dancing uncontrollably until you die. And somebody has to actually pull you out of the fairy ring. I wonder if that dancing hysteria that happened 
that dance mania wasn't caused by by fairies in some way. To me, it seems like like an awful coincidence that one of the things fairies will do to you is make you dance until you die. And here we have a case of a lot of people dancing until they died in Germany and in other parts of Europe, but mainly Germany during this time period. And there's no cause for it. Nobody knows why. Historians have tried to figure it out and they just, they don't know. I wonder if that was caused by fairies. Could be. Now, when these outbreaks occurred, it was typical for a musician to accompany the dancers. This was thought to be able to help ward off the dance mania and, and actually have them stop because they thought that when you're playing the music and you're dancing to it, that when the music stops, the mind would subconsciously tell the body to stop dancing because the music has stopped. And it was thought that this was a way to, to potentially help these people that were suffering from dance mania and, and actually save some of them. Now, I don't know if it ever actually worked to stop people from, from dancing themselves to death. I know that it was attempted a lot. Uh, they would do this quite a bit. And a lot of times they would have the musician that accompanied them be some sort of pipe player or flute player, something like that. So that kind of fits. It kind of fits in with the story because in the story we have the Pied Piper who's playing a pipe and leading the children off. Maybe they were leading the children off because they had this dance mania and they were worried about it spreading to other people in the town. So they took them out away from the town somewhere to try to help them and cure them, but they just never returned because they danced themselves to death. Or maybe something happened to them out there. You know, some sort of uh, natural disaster or something like that happened. Whatever the reason, they went out and they never came back, but that would kind of explain the tale of the Pied Piper leading the children away. And we know that that is something that actually did happen in Germany during that time period. It's a very, very interesting affliction. I don't understand why it happened, but maybe it's the fairy thing. Now, there were actual accounts of massive amounts of people being led off because they had the dancing mania. And there's one uh, tale that talks about over 200 people that were being led out of the town because they had dancing mania to try to, to help them. And they went across a, a bridge. And supposedly, according to the account, they danced on the bridge and they were dancing too hard. It was too much weight. And with them stomping and dancing around and the bridge actually collapsed and they all died. It was a bridge that was over the, uh, the Moselle river and they all died. So maybe something like that happened that caused the death of these children. I like this theory. I think that it makes sense to me. I don't know if it's true or not. I don't know if this is actually what happened to these kids, but it's my favorite out of all the theories, just because I like the idea of there being an affliction called dancing mania that causes you to dance yourself to death. It's just interesting. The next theory is that the Pied Piper bought the children from their parents. Now in this theory, the children didn't go missing. They didn't just leave. They were actually sold by their parents and sent away with the Piper. By the 13th century, a lot of people in Germany were, were very, very, very poor. And it was also beginning to become overpopulated in that area. It was too many people, not enough food to feed them, and there was a lot of poverty going on. Uh, because of this overpopulation, the oldest son in a family would inherit the land, and all the other children would just become serfs. So according to this theory, the children of Hamlin were sold to a recruiter from the Baltic region of Eastern Europe, whether that be to start getting training as soldiers and to end up fighting in an army, or whether they were sold as slaves, or whatever reason the guy who bought them had for buying them, that was the 
the idea that they were sold away, that they didn't leave. Now, the practice of buying and selling children, believe it or not, was not unusual for that time period. And it would have been a way for the town to get rid of poor children, illegitimate children, uh, orphans, stuff like that. Because you had a lot of that, too, where, where the parents would die of disease or starvation or, or murder or something like that. And there really wasn't a social service system or anything then. The kids were just kind of orphans, and they just kind of lived on the streets and begged for food and money and stole and did what they had to do to survive. So a large town would have a lot of little what they used to call street urchins running around. And basically, it's just homeless kids that were trying to make a living and, and survive. So there would have been a way for the town to, to kind of get rid of that, that problem. It also makes sense with the lack of, of records of the incident. Because if you're selling off a whole bunch of kids from your town, that's kind of bad PR. You're not going to want to make a note of that. You're not going to want to write big headlines about it. You're going to want to kind of keep it hush-hush, I would think. So it makes sense that there wouldn't be a whole lot of records of this if that's what happened. Now, the odd part about this about this theory is that the event on on uh, June 26, 1284, was a date that, that was mourned by the people of Hamlin. The accounts that we do have, although there's not many, but the ones that we do have and the church window seem to commemorate it as a tragic event that took place and they the people were mourning it so if if they had sold the kids off themselves i don't know if they'd be mourning it so much you know they wouldn't look at it as a tragedy they would look at it as a solution to a problem i would imagine so that's the only problem i have uh with this one even if they did it reluctantly they thought well we don't really have nothing to do with these kids let's just get rid of them it's still i imagine you'd feel guilty about it afterwards so I don't know, maybe they did view it as a tragedy because they felt guilty. The next theory is that he was actually a headhunter who encouraged the children to migrate, to move somewhere else. Now, this theory states that the children weren't lost. They just simply left, and they did that because they moved somewhere else. They just don't really know exactly where they moved. Now, there are similar surnames to the people in the town of Hamlin that have been found in Eastern Europe, uh, specifically in Poland and in Transylvania. And during that time period, there were a lot of Germans that, that left Germany to colonize those regions. So this theory also states that the children of Hamlin that got, supposedly got led away by the Pied Piper, in the actual events weren't really children, but they were just unemployed young people. And they were known as town children. That's what the, their nickname was or whatever. Because they were being taken care of by the town. And that they left because this guy showed up, who they called a headhunter, who basically offered them land if they would move and populate that area. Uh, we did the exact same thing here in the United States during our westward expansion. The government would give plots of land to anybody who would agree to go out and settle that land and actually live there. So they would receive so many acres of land for free. All they had to do was go and and settle it and live there. So it's not unheard of that that would happen, and it did happen in that area during that time period. Now, when these headhunters would come to a town and try to attract people, they were known to wear very colorful robes. And were very persuasive. They would talk a good game. They were salespeople, basically. Their job was to sell this new area to the people. They wanted the people to believe that this new area that they wanted them to go to and settle in was this amazing land flowing with milk and honey, all the riches you can imagine, just such a great thing. So that kind of fits the story, too, of them, of them charming and leading away the children. The headhunter would charm and lead away the young people that he wanted them to settle. Now, this theory is probably the one that is closest to the reality of what what might have happened. It makes the most sense. It seems the most likely of all the theories, in my opinion. But the only problem I have with it is, once again, it is looked at as a tragic event. 
that took place in his town. If you had 100 young people that left, or over 100, 130 or whatever, young people that left to go and settle a new area where they got free land and opportunity to have a great life, why would that be looked at as tragedy by the town? Why would it be mourned by the town? You would think that the town people would be like, oh, that day was great, man. 100 of our, 130 of our people got a big plot of land for free. And they got to move to a new area and start a new life. I mean, the area we're in right during that time, it kind of sucked. You know, everybody was poor. There was no food. People were doing bad. So the idea that, that 130 young people got the opportunity to have a new start and a better life, that doesn't sound to me like something that that you would be mourning. That sounds to me like something that you would be be celebrating. So that those are the major theories of what happened to the children that were led away by the Pied Piper in the in the story. Most historians agree that this is not just a fairy tale or a myth that it actually happened. We just don't know why. I've given you the major theories on what happened to those children, but it could have been anything, really. It could have been something that, that we haven't even thought of yet. I'm not going to sit here and say that I know what happened to the kids because I don't. There's no evidence to find. I've looked. I, I, I can't figure out what happened to them. There's some of the major theories, and I think it might have been some of those things. You know, a couple of them, they're possible. I mean, of course, you obviously have the alien theory as well. You have that every time something like this happens. You have it with the Lost Colony of Roanoke. You have it with Atlantis. There's always an alien theory that the children were abducted by aliens or whatever. I didn't cover it in the show because, honestly, the whole idea of the whole alien thing is kind of tiresome to me, and it bores the hell out of me because every single thing in the paranormal, there's always an alien theory that goes along with it. And I'm just so bored to death of, of talking about it and hearing about it. So that's why I didn't cover it. But those are the major theories. And I think I really like the dancing mania theory. I, I dig that one. It's really cool. I don't know if it's true or not, but it, it seems likely it's possible because it was a practice that people followed to take people that were suffering from dancing mania away from the town so that they wouldn't infect other people. So that tells me maybe dancing mania was spread somehow, like the cold or a flu, that you could actually catch it. I don't know. But it is known that that, that was commonplace to do. So it fits with the story. The headhunter one is also very likely because we do know that, that people would come into towns and recruit young people to go settle the lands. So that one makes sense and is possible. So I think if one of these theories is correct, it's one of those two. But it might be something else entirely, like I said. Now I'm going to throw over to Old Boy now, and I want to get his opinion on these theories and what he thinks might have happened to the children of Hamlet. And thank you, and good evening, guys. I've liked this story since I was a kid, because we all heard the story of the Pied Piper. I really enjoyed this when I was a kid, because it was a fairy tale told by my mom to go put me to sleep. And this one's very interesting because it might have some truth to it. Do I believe all of it? No, because you know how it has been. They tell you stuff to put your kids to sleep, and they exaggerate it just like the, the whole uh, phone thing. You tell somebody something, and it gets exaggerated to somebody else, and it becomes a whole new story, a new legend. It becomes just this outrageous story. But do I believe this? I believe there's a possibility. I believe that here's my theories on it like james is talking earlier about the pedophilia one the only problem i have with that is how did he get 135 kids or 136 and do all that at once it would take more than one time to do it unless he had more than one person with him and there's a story where there's more than one people but even then if you had one or two people that'd still be kind of hard but i don't know if i believe that one now him with this flute that like hypnotizes these kids that's weird to me because that sounds more paranormal to me and there's another here's a new theory that i think if he had this kind of thing then he had some kind of witchcraft or some kind of ability that maybe he got 
And that's how he got these rats to do what, you know, got them to drown themselves in the lake or river. And, and what I'm thinking is maybe that's how he got these kids to do what he wanted. And like he was saying with fairies, maybe he knew a fairy or he was a fairy dressed as a human being or a fake, you know, it could have been any, and no one's really thought about this theory. And, you know, they didn't pay him, so he got him back and he sent the kids over the cliff or he had a couple friends go and they, 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 they drowned these kids, just had them fall off into the, the river. Um, that would be the one I'm thinking of. Maybe that's what happened, that he got this pipe, the Pipe Piper, what he played with, the flute or whatever it is, and it was magical. And he used it to get these kids to do what he wanted. And that's the only way I could think about it. Or he drugged them. That's the other thing I can think. So that makes me think that there's more to this story right now. How did he get the, you know, the pipe, the, the, the flute to play songs like that to make people follow him? So that might be that it was magic. It was something he got from maybe a fairy or he was a fairy or he was some kind of magical creature and he did this for a living or he, you know, he met some magical creature that gave him this thing and he would go kill rats or whatever he was doing and they didn't pay him. So he got revenge years later and came back and he had these kids follow him and kill them either one way or another. And then there's stories that he didn't kill them. They changed saying that he took them to a cave, shut the cave because the chief that lived at the, the town didn't want to pay him. And felt when the chief found out, because I guess two of the kids got away and told him what happened. See, that's another thing. Two or three of the kids got away and went and told people what happened in the town. They begged the piper to give him back their kids, and he did. He had to give them extra money, extra 20 bags of gold or something. That's another story that he let the kids survive. And there's another, and that's the one they're telling now. And then now I've read that it was a tragedy. He was a murderer and a psychopath, like James was saying earlier. And that's a possibility, too, that this guy had this pipe that could lure these kids, and he just murdered them. But it's kind of hard to figure he killed 136 kids at one time, unless he had more than one person. And that theory is the only thing I don't believe. That would be He would have to do it more than like over in a year's time, like James is talking about. That would make more sense. But they probably would have killed him, or they found him and killed him, and you know, back then... They, they killed you. They stoned you or cut your head off or whatever they did in Germany. It wasn't nice. But this happened over 7,800 years ago. So that's probably what happened. He was killed. Or he was stoned to death or they burned him. Because they probably thought he was doing witchcraft. You know, back then, they, they thought you were doing witchcraft. They burn you. And they probably did. They burned him to this. That could be a possibility. They thought he was a witch or a devil worshiper and they burned him. And in... That could be another theory. He was a devil, you know, into black magic. And that's why he got these kids to do what he wanted to do. And the rats, too, because he supposedly was a rat catcher. And he had these rats. I mean, I've never heard of anybody getting rats to follow them out of a town all the way and jump into a lake or a river and then have kids do it. So that's crazy because there's some kind of hypnotist he did. And that's so that's what I'm saying. This has got a paranormal feel to it. So that that's one of my theories. Another one is, like James was saying earlier, back then people sold kids because they didn't have the money to keep them in their towns because they were broke, poor, just like, you know, uh, Oliver, Twist. They would put them in, like, orphan houses. It was a big town, big city, but, like, little towns, they would sell them, and they would either have better life, so they sell them to trade, to go work in the mines, you know, or look at Pinocchio. Remember, they sent all those bad kids away to this place, they thought it was all nice and end up turning into donkeys, but I don't believe all that. But I'm saying it, they could have been a bad place, they could have been sent for slavery, they could have been sent to Saudi Arabia just to get sold anywhere. I'm not saying it happened, but it could have, it could have happened. They could have been sold on a, as, as, as slaves, or they could have had a better life. They could have just wanted to build another town, and they just he sent them to these other place and gave them land, and he got money for it to get these kids to a better way of life because that's what some people did and in those times even in all the way up to the 1900s if you didn't have money and it was a depression they would send your kids to the family that did have money or friends that had money or they put them up for adoption so they would have a better life and that might be a theory that james was talking about earlier that these kids got sent to have a better life 
And that would make sense, too. That's another theory that I kind of might agree with, kind of like Roanoke, where these people just disappeared. No, they got sent to another land, and they lived somewhere else. And that probably happened. If so, if I was living in a poor town on the street, because like you were saying, they weren't all necessarily like little kids. They were teenagers, probably young adults and kids. And I would, instead of living on the street, if some guy came back and said, I'm going to give you all this land, and you're going to, you know, you got to build it up, but you're going to get, you're going to have a place to stay, I would go. I wouldn't sleep on the street and beg for change. That's crazy. But I could, I could believe that story. That's a possibility. Now, there's a lot of history saying that he, that he murdered these kids. So that's the theory I'm thinking, that this guy wasn't good. And yeah, he might have did this. This might be the whole revenge thing. And that's a possibility because that's a good theory, that he got mad because they didn't pay him the money. So he took revenge. And that's a messed up way to take revenge. So they probably killed this guy. I hope they caught him. Because somebody like that, if I caught him, I, like James said, we, I would kill them. I'd have probably hopped his head off. And people would know never to mess with kids again. But that's me. I'm different. Me and James don't like people like that. Where that's a whole different story. That's the theory I'm kind of thinking. That there's t those two right there. That he either sold the kids or he was a pedophile. Actually, there's three theories, I think. Or that he let the kids go and it's, he just got twisted in too many stories. Like 200 different stories. And... Now it's like, oh, we don't know if he killed him or he used black magic. That's another possibility, too, that he had a flute and he found the way of the fairies because there's like he was saying, there's a fairy. You got in that circle, you could dance your way to the death, dance to death, the dance of the dead, you know, and that's how these people could have, these, he could have got these kids to die. Is that possible? I forgot about that one. He got, they danced themselves to death and that would make sense because then you could kill 136 kids. And uh, instead of drowning them. But drowning them would be another easy way to do it. I don't think he got them in the hill and just started going off on town and just killing them because that would take a long time. And that would take a lot of effort. Unless they were like, um, he poisoned them? That's another theory. Or he let the fairies have them. And like, there's another story behind that is he, he could have been working for them and just took these kids and they did what they wanted with them and took them away. Or got into their souls and made halflings. That's a possibility. I just thought about that one, man. I forgot about that. And that's a possibility. That that's why these kids, he never saw them again. He gave them away to them. And they did something to them. Or they took them to fairyland or whatever. That's another pot. This is a theory. You know, because we did a show about uh, fairies and leprechauns uh, a couple weeks ago for um, St. Patty's Day. So that's just my theory. Um, is that a possibility? Probably highly unlikely. Do I think the story exists? Yeah, but I think it's been exaggerated to, to fairy tales. But there's always truth to some story. And yes, I believe my opinion on this story is I don't think it was a good thing, whatever he was doing. It was probably a chance that he was getting revenge. I do believe that. That's, that's a possibility. But I also believe that he was a bad person and he did something with these kids. I don't know what you guys want to believe. You guys can believe whatever you want. You could even believe it didn't even exist. That's up to you guys. That's what we love about this show. You guys are going to make your own theories. You can comment on the videos because we're going to put the video on YouTube. So you guys can say and do whatever you want with this. You know, give your opinion. If you know a story that we didn't even hear before, let us know about it so it'll be something else because I didn't even know all this stuff with, with the Pied Piper. I've always watched it. I mean, this is a very popular thing. They would play on cartoons. I saw on Disney, I think, had a version of it. And the Warner Brothers had a thing. And you saw them dancing around with the rats, getting them out. And then he shows them trying to take the kids. You know, I saw Disney and a couple other cartoons. I've seen a couple things about this. This was a very popular story back in the 1800s, early, early 20th century. This was a very popular story. Even when I was a kid, I heard this story. So it was something popular. So it's gone on through time. And became one of the most famous stories ever. But I didn't know all this stuff To James found all this stuff out. It's really interesting because this stuff could really happen. All these stories could really happen, what we talk about. That's the crazy thing. This may not all be, this might be all real. It's probably, like I said, it's probably an exaggerated. Like Hollywood does, they exaggerate everything that we see in, in, on TV. So you, you never know. You're so um, sensitive, desensitized to everything you don't. Even if 
the Pied Piper came to your house and took your kid out, you probably think it was a joke, it wasn't real, or CGI, or, or some kind of trick. And that's what the problem is. People, it's hard to fool people now because people have seen so much stuff on Hollywood and TV and computers and video games that it'd be almost impossible. To, if you've seen some guy running around with a flute with a bunch of kids and rats, you'd probably think it was a joke. Just like if aliens came down and came da tap dancing on top of your house, you'd probably think it's not real. You would find some way of saying that's not doesn't that didn't really happen. It's not really happening. So my opinion is it's a very possible thing that happened. It probably did happen, but it's been exaggerated. And he probably was a child killer. So one way or another, he killed these kids. So he's a child killer. It doesn't matter if they owe him money or not. He should have never done something like that. I'm sorry. That's an evil, despicable thing. Or he was working for the fairies, and he, or he sold them. Those are the only couple theories I could think of, man. I, I, this is a very crazy story to me. So, But what do you think, James? The idea that the Pied Piper may have been a fairy is an interesting concept. And if you guys recall on our fairy show, I spoke about changelings and how fairies will steal infant children and replace them with their own children or their elderly sometimes. And the infant children they will take back to fairyland for all kinds of different purposes. Sometimes slavery, sometimes to raise as their own, who knows. But it's an interesting idea because they never did find the bodies that, that I know about. There's no record of any kind of mass burial of 136 children. There's no record of them going and seeing a massacre, like a battlefield littered with, with bodies. That evidence does not exist. It, it's not in the record. Doesn't mean it didn't happen. It just means that it wasn't recorded. We don't know. So the idea that maybe where these children disappeared to, either he might have been a fairy or maybe like old boy said, he was working for the fairies and that's where the children went was to fairyland. He sold them to the fairies. Because, hey, if the town's not going to pay me, the fairies will. Their gold is good. Who knows? Is it likely? Probably not. I'd put it probably down on the bottom of the list as far as being likely to have actually happened. But I'd put it up near the top of the list as being interesting. I mean, that's a cool story, man. If that's the truth, how awesome would that be, right? I would love that to be the truth. I mean, not that I want the kids to go away and whatever they do to them there, that sucks. But... The kids are gone regardless, so that's kind of a cool way for the story to go. It's interesting. It's, it's a new and different concept that you're not used to hearing. So I don't know. The, the bottom line is we don't know. We don't know what happened to these kids. It's pretty evident to me that something happened to these children. I don't think this is a completely made-up tale because there's just too much evidence that it's not. I mean, there's documentation that this actually took place. So this is a real event. Something happened to those 136 children. Now, whether they just left or whether they were killed or, or abducted into fairyland or abducted into slavery or who knows what happened, but something happened. We've given you on this show some of the, the bigger theories, the, the more widespread theories on, on what happened to them. But like I said earlier, it could be anything. I mean, there could be so many different scenarios that we didn't even talk about tonight. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this, and I hope that, that we kind of taught you something new tonight. Because even though we don't really know what happened to the children, I guarantee you the majority of the audience listening tonight had absolutely no idea that the tale of the Pied Piper was actually a true story. That it actually happened. When it's make-believe, it's a fun little tale. It's, you know, creepy little guy with a pipe comes along and takes away the children. Oh, it's so fun. But then you find out it's real, and it's like, oh, it's not so fun anymore, is it? That's, that's a lot of dead kids. That sucks. And on the thing of leading the rats into the water, I wanted to touch on that again because, believe it or not, old boy, that is documented several different places, not just with the, the Pied Piper tale, but throughout the records of that time period, that is documented as the way they did it. A lot of times when they would have rat infestations, they would have somebody come in with a flute or a pipe that would lead the rats away into the water and they would drown. I don't know why the rats follow the music, but for some reason, they do. I mean, we've seen with 
with snake charmers, how they'll play their little flute and the cobra will come up out of the basket and sway. Now, with the cobra, it's not exactly the same because they can't hear it because they don't have ears. Snakes, all snakes, really, they, they sense their environment through smell and taste, so to speak. What they do is they flick their tongue out and they capture air molecules on their tongue and they bring that back into their mouth. And at the very back of their mouth, near their uh, back of their throat, is a little thing called the Jacobson organ. And that reads, so to speak, the air molecules. So it captures air molecules on its tongue, brings it back in, deposits those air molecules into the Jacobson organ, and it gives them a almost a sonar image of of their surroundings so they know what's around them because their eyesight's not really all that great either but that's how they kind of know what's going on and they know where everything is and how they can tell what's what's happening because they don't really have ears they don't have any ability to really hear when they supposedly hear things like horses coming or or you stomping around so they strike it's not that they're hearing the the audible sound they are picking up the vibrations through their jacobson organ it's very, very interesting and very fascinating stuff. This isn't a show about snakes, though, so I'm going to stop about that. But it's just very, very, very cool. I love little stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this show. And I'm going to throw it back to Old Boy now uh, so he can give all of his shout-outs and everything like that, and we'll wrap up. Thank you, brother. I want you guys to all understand that James has been wanting to do this show for about six or seven months. We finally decided to do it. I actually enjoyed it. Now I found out more about the story, and it's good. It's a good, awesome story, but it has a tragic end to it, I think. A bad, tragic end. But I want everybody to to realize we love doing these shows. We finally did a little bit something different. We'll do a lot of things different now. But just to let you know is we have a merchandise uh, store now online. James will tell you where to go after that. I don't want to mess it up. But uh, we do have merchandise. You can buy shirts, baby clothes iPod cases, it has Staring the Abyss, me or James Hershey on it, or it has the eye, the Staring Abyss eye, it has stuff about his books, you can buy like pictures of his books on it, on his shirt, it, we have a lot of merchandise now, so different sayings we say, you guys want to check that out, he'll tell you in a minute where to go, always follow us on uh, YouTube, you can listen to all our old shows man, it's on that. We also have, uh, if you guys want to sponsor us still, let us know, or, or do advertising, let us know. Hit ask uh, on instant message one of us on Facebook, or, 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 and we'll get back to you. Me or James Hershey, James Ash, old boy, look me up on Facebook. You guys want to follow me or James Hershey, look him on Facebook or Instagram, same thing. I want everybody to have a great night. I love you guys. I want to give a shout out to Vape Out in Apple Valley, California, off of Highway 18. If you guys want to get, if you live in this area or the IE, go to that store and get yourself some uh, vape juice. They, they have non uh, nicotine all the way up to four or five, I think, the level is. And you guys can go in there and he has a bunch of stuff too. Like you could buy vapors and coils and stuff like that. Check him out. He's a really cool guy. His name's Ryan. Ask for Ryan. Or you can, I think you guys can look him up online. It's vapeout.com. But I want everybody to know I love you guys. Have a great night. Sugar Ladies, Misfits, and Demon Hunters, I love you. God bless you. Blessed be. I love you all. Good night. The link to the YouTube channel is youtube.com slash James Hershey Jr. On that channel, you will find all of our old shows. Every week we put them up. Usually the next day, sometimes the day after the next day. It all depends on how busy I've been that week. But within one or two days, every one of our shows goes up on the YouTube channel. Also on that channel, you will find a lot of different evidence videos. I like to put those up as well. When I find photographs of different creatures or different witness accounts and stuff like that, I like to make little videos and put them on the YouTube channel to share that evidence with you guys. Um, there's all kinds of very interesting stuff on there. It's everything pretty much in the paranormal you'll find on that YouTube channel. There's so much there. Um, it's 100% free. It'll never cost you anything as far as I'm concerned. Now, whatever YouTube does is what YouTube does. But as of now, it's 100% free, and I plan on keeping it that way. So check it out. You guys can subscribe so that you can catch all the different videos when they come. And just enjoy it, because that, that's why I put so much work into it, is so that you guys can go there and, and have fun watching it. The merchandise line, the store is T 
teespring.com. It's T E E spring.com slash store slash staring into the abyss. Teespring.com slash store slash staring into the abyss. That's the website for all the different merchandise. There's tons and tons of different stuff there. I make new designs of shirts and new designs of all these different things pretty much on a weekly basis. So keep checking back. There's always going to be new stuff up. There's always going to be really cool stuff for you to check out. The quality of the stuff is really, really good. Uh, we got a couple shirts from there and to check out the quality, and it's, it's nice stuff. And the price is pretty decent. It's not too bad. So if you guys are in the market for merch, if you guys want some merch, because we've had a lot of people ask us about it. That's why uh, we did this is because we've had a lot of people that have wanted T-shirts and posters and that kind of thing. And all of that is available now. So if you're a person that loves merch and you want to sport some Staring Into Your Best merch, it's all there for you. Go check it out. Enjoy it. Um, also, I make my living as a horror author. So if you guys could please check out my books, I would really appreciate that. Um, I wrote the I Am Legion series. It's I Am Legion. The Surrogate of Souls, and The Rise of the Revenant. I also have a standalone novel, which is called Call the Wind Spirits. Uh, those four novels are available on Amazon. They're available on Kindle and paperback and audiobook. Uh, you can get them at Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, Walmart. Some of the stores carry them, some of them don't, but all of the websites have them. Uh, probably, honestly, the best place to go is just Amazon because they have Prime and it can be to you like in two days if you order the paperback or the audio and the Kindle is, is immediate. So that's probably the easiest way to do it. But whichever your favorite is, you'll be able to find it. Um, I just want to say thank you guys so much for the support, for all the love. And I did this on my Facebook and I'm going to do it on the show as well. I want to give a special shout out to Australia. I received my sales figures for the month. And I was blown away by Australia, man. I don't know what happened over there, but you guys bought a ton of my books last month, and I appreciate that. I just want to give you a special shout-out and tell you I love you, and I appreciate you, and keep on buying the books, man, because that's really, really awesome. And thank you very much, and thank you to all of all of my readers all over the world, all of you guys that, that enjoy my work. I really, really appreciate that. I'm working on a new novel now. It's going to be called The Devil's Touch. Um, it's over halfway done. I'm really, really busy with the show and with all these other things I'm doing now, but I am still working on it. So within the next year, you will have a new novel that will be coming out for you guys to enjoy. With that being said, thank you guys again for all your support. Thanks for listening. I hope that you enjoy the show. If there is a specific show that you would like to hear, if there is a subject matter or a topic that you would like us to do a show on, Hit me up on Facebook. James Hershey Jr. on Facebook um, is my author's account, and then James Hershey is my regular account. Hit me up and let me know. You can leave it on my timeline. You can send me a message. Uh, James Ash, that's old boy's real name. You can check him out on Facebook as well. Send him a message. If there's something that you guys want to hear that we haven't covered yet, send us a message, and we'll, we'll look about it and see if it's something we can do a show on. But with that being said, thank you guys so much. We love you, we appreciate you, and until we speak to you again, love many, trust few, and do harm to none. God loves you, and so do we. Bye-bye.